The next few systems we're just going to touch on very lightly before finishing off our introduction to anatomy and physiology. The first one we'll have a look at is the digestive system. The digestive system is a collection of different organs and glands that are responsible for taking in raw materials, breaking them down into small molecules which the body can absorb and which the cells can use to perform the different functions that are necessary for life. These different organs are also responsible for the elimination of the waste products of the body. The different organs include things such as organs of the oral cavity, the esophagus, the stomach, the liver, gallbladder and pancreas, and then the small and the large intestines. So food and fluids all enter in through the body through the oral cavity. They're then broken down at different stages in the digestive tract and absorbed at different times um, in order for the body to obtain the highest amount of nutrients from them. And then all waste products are removed through the rectum and the anus. The endocrine system is one of the most overlooked or understated systems in the body. A lot of people only think of the endocrine system as being involved with sexual hormones and regulating menstrual cycles and things like that, but they have so much more power over our bodies than we actually realize. The endocrine system is a collection of glands around the body which are responsible for multiple different actions. Some of these actions include things such as our growth. So even though our genes may dictate how tall or how large we would be, the endocrine system is basically the translator of our genes and it's what directs our body to grow in particular ways through growth hormones. So it determines ultimately how tall we will be, how large our bones will be, how dense they will be, and with this, how large and how big how mus our muscles will be. It determines and sets our body's ability to metabolize and the rate at which we metabolize things. So all our cellular processes are based on what the endocrine sets them to be. The endocrine system is responsible for the production of insulin. And if you remember all the way back to the beginning or the introduction of anatomy and physiology, um, you remember that glucose cannot enter into the body's cells without the presence of insulin. It's the key that opens the door that allows glucose to go into the cell and for cellular respiration to occur. So it's absolutely vital for the primary functions of the human body. And also endocrine system is responsible for the production of the different sexual hormones which play a very large part of our existence as it makes up our reproductive system. The male and female reproductive systems are very different and they have very different types of organs and hormones which are involved in either of these. But both are absolutely vital for the continuation of the species. The urinary system is responsible for maintaining or aiding in fluid balance within the body as well as the pH balance. It filters the body's fluid and cleans it of its toxins and it eliminates waste products in the formation of urine. These are the different organs involved in the urinary system. So we have a left and a right kidney, the ureter which is the tube leading the already filtered fluids from the kidney in the form of urine down to the urinary bladder where it's stored and um, finally where it exits the body from the urinary bladder through the urethra. Your integumentary system which consists of your skin, your hair and your nails is involved in functions such as maintaining temperature or your thermoregulation, preventing infection from occurring, preventing dehydration, and protecting against minor trauma, such as bumps and scrapes. This is the diagram of the different layers and structures that are in the skin. The deepest layer of the skin is called subcutaneous tissue, meaning under the skin. Uh, this subcutaneous tissue consists of things like fatty tissue or adipose tissue, we have our blood vessels running here and the base of all our nerves. 
The nerves and blood vessels also extend up into this dermis or the dermal layer and in this layer over here we also have other major structures like our hair follicles, we have sebaceous glands or oil glands which secrete fluids on or oils onto the surface of our skin to keep it soft and supple and stop it from cracking all the time. We also have our sweat glands. These are involved in our thermoregulation as well as our blood vessels that secrete, um, well the sweat glands which secrete uh, fluids onto our skin to be evaporated off with. And we also have different receptors within the tissues and these receptors help us to feel all different types of sensations. The outer layer of the skin is called the epidermis. In the epidermis there's a growth plate here that's colored in a dark purple color and this is where all the epithelial cells grow from and as these epithelial cells grow out towards the surface so they die and they become very hard and compact and through this whole process um, of becoming dead and compact they become what's called keratinized and this compact dead keratinized cells on the outer surface of, of our body is what stops infections from readily moving into the body. It also has hydrophobic qualities so it stops water from just leaking out of our body and stops us from absorbing water so we can go and have a shower or go for a nice swim and uh, our body doesn't absorb all the water that's around us. So it provides a, a good amount of protection um, to us as well as protecting the underlying softer more delicate tissues in our skin. The lymphatic system is the last system that we're going to have a look at. It's also called the drainage system of the body. It's considered to be part of the circulatory system and as you can see just from the diagram it kind of looks like and mimics the circulatory system with its vessels extending all the way from the tissues to the core of the body. The circulatory system, when it delivers its oxygen and nutrients um, and fluids to the tissues, any excess fluids that are there in the tissues is then absorbed and picked up by the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system moves that fluid from the, bo the body and returns it back into the bloodstream once it has been cleaned and it's been filtered through the different lymph nodes in that system too. So the main functions of the lymphatic system is to drain fluid away from the tissues, to clean that fluid and put it back into the circulatory system. It's also heavily involved in the production of white blood cells and it aids in our immune system functions. This is a picture of a lymph capillary and it's situated right in the middle of the tissues. So when there is excess fluid coming from the cells itself or in between the cells, that excess fluid is then drawn up into the lymphatic system which then joins up to the lymphatic nodes and is actually deposited back into circulation in the venous system over here. So here we can see that the circulatory system and the lymphatic system are very closely connected. So in conclusion, all of these 11 organ systems are absolutely vital and important for the functioning of the human body. They are very closely linked to one another and they rely very heavily on one another. And if one of these organ systems were to fail, then the whole organism or whole system would fail too. If you have any questions regarding the introduction to anatomy and physiology, please don't hesitate to contact us and don't forget to go through your recommended reading lists.